First of all, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for special reason. Uh, I couldn't get Italian visa, so I illegally entered into the embassy in Tokyo, and uh, I was thrown out of the embassy. So you can understand uh, what the organizers did to help me to, so that I could come here. So I, would, I have a special thank to <laughs> offer to all the organizers here and University of Arizona, uh, Abby especially. And I would like to uh, present today uh, an artificial brain um, and a human being, a conscious being, trying to interact with an artificial brain. So my research has been for the last 19 years to develop an artificial brain. And um, uh, you can see uh, two artificial brains over there. They were talking to each other. And when we were doing it, Stuart was there in our lab in Japan. And uh, Martin here somewhere, he was also there. Yeah. And uh, International Geographic team, shooting team was there. And we are working day and night to get this done. So to the right side, you see that um, people are wearing durekanogram, a very advanced system of uh, electroencephalogram. And we increase the number of human participants. So we locked the brain of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, to understand that how many people we need, how many people's brain we need to uh, couple to see that there is a invariant uh, con consciousness constructs. So these are the two primary aspects that I will, I will share today. So this uh, slide uh, you saw, Stuart explained nicely, and um, today I was talking to one gentleman and he was also presenting this slide. This is an old work in our uh, lab. In 2012, we showed that um, if you go to single protein scale, and if you try to uh, understand the vibrations, the frequencies, those are not random. They have a beautiful pattern, and that is called triplet of triplet. This sounds very mathematical. What is it? Actually, uh, if you go to the millisecond time domain, that is um, kilohertz, you will find that uh, there are three bands, three different time region where brain gets or protein gets active. Then if you go to one time region, you find three more time regions, isolated and discrete, th uh, they get active. But it is not limited to the single protein scale. Even when you go to the protein complex like microtubule, you find similar thing. When you go to the neuron scale, you find the same thing. So it's a scale-free pattern. And at that point of time, I was in my th uh, the early 30s, so I was stupid. And uh, what I did is I uh, extrapolated towards the higher, higher domain, triplet of triplet, and lower domain. And I speculated that there will be a resonance chain and I had the only experimental result uh, for uh, microtubule, tubulin, and neuron. But I said that entire brain body system, smallest to the largest, it should be triplet of triplet, similar thing. Because I saw this and I published it. Then I forgot it. In 2020, one person from US, he purchased an instrument and uh, he saw triplet of triplet. To the left, you are seeing, he touches the brain here, scalp. And when he takes it out, it goes away. He searched in the Google triplet of triplet. He found only one stupid in the world talking like this. And he found my phone number and called me in Japan and told me that uh, I saw microtubules in my brain. I said, microtubule in your brain? I said, yes. He sent me the photograph. I, um, Encircled it with YOLO so that you don't recognize him, just to keep this. And uh, this actually uh, was very surprising. I thought, uh, I mean, why we scientists are so stupid? I, could, I have this instrument in my lab. I could do it in my brain. But we do research, but we never trust ourselves. I, I wrote it myself that it will be everywhere, but I never did it, never touched it in my own brain. But he did it. So sometimes we should talk to those who are not scientists. They give us much more insight <laughs> than we can uh, come up with. So it changed my life. So what I thought is that 
enter this uh, smallest to the largest, the entire time domain I have to observe. Maybe all these years neuroscience was looking at a completely wrong place. Maybe at a particular millisecond time domain, the neuron firing, it is not there, consciousness. It could be in all the time domain and spread, but there was no instrument. 1875, EEG was discovered and one hertz to 40 hertz. And it, is, it was 2020, so nearly 125 years passed, or 145 years passed. And nobody increased the frequency range. It was up to 200, 300 hertz, but we had to increase a lot. So, and I checked that uh, Richard Caton's work, uh, 1875, and the, all these you know much better than me, but it's still I'm just refreshing that um, uh, this kind of, uh, uh, there are two probes, uh, and the two probes uh, put in EEG machine, and they take signal from one probe, another probe, and they find the difference. Very interesting. Have we ever thought that they take signal from one part of your brain and a little far another electrode, and they uh, deduct that, and the deducted value is your brain signal? Where is it located? Why do they do that? I mean, I couldn't find any logic. I know you are, maybe many of you are working on EEG, EEG, but they do that. Input one, input two, they deduct it. And they do many beautiful things. Uh, when they take the, your consciousness data and all kind of brain data, and many, many thousands of papers are published. What do they do? They clean or remove the artifact. Beautiful. So from the brain signals, what they get, if there are artifacts like this, they will delete it. They will filter the um, unwanted signals, which they don't like. Epoching or segmenting, baseline correction, averaging trials per subject, averaging over subjects. What a fantastic thing. Please take a photograph. You should keep it. That EEG machine-based uh, database published research papers contains these kind of things. Okay? So we had to do something about it. So here comes the idea. So EEG, 5 to 100 microvolt, and they take from two different places, they deduct. We came up with an idea, and then there are uh, fMRI and other studies by which they correlate that pyramidal neurons. Why they are all directed upwards? Uh, does any neuroscientist have any idea? I would love to learn why all the neurons are directed upward and they fire upwards towards the skull. Why, what is there in the skull? Somebody will be measuring for EEG? I don't know. But neurons are directed upwards, and they fire upwards, and their uh, signal somehow comes, and uh, millisecond uh, level neuron firing occurs. Now, if less than millisecond, that is microsecond, you cannot assign it to the neuron and synaptic junctions because they do not operate in the millisecond time domain. So, uh, we get a DDG. What is DDG? Duodecanogram. What is the uh, name of the uh, origin of the name? I don't have time, so I will not tell. So, uh, in DDG, what we do is we send one picosecond or 10 picosecond pulse, picosecond, and then we actual burst is there, and we send it uh, when there is a, for say, um, 50 picosecond, some uh, activation occurs in the scalp. They, then we take that value and we call it, say, uh, DDG. And EG, you have two different space, two different signals. You uh, deduct it, differentiate it, and you get the EEG. So there is a basic difference between the two. And so our idea is that, um, uh, first of all, we have to make DDG, a new kind of machine so that we can see entire time domain. So new invention or new discoveries come from new inventions, you know that. We need to see many more data, unknown data, which have never been seen before, to understand what is happening in the brain. Why are we conscious? So uh, my idea was that we will make the artificial brain and we put the uh, DDG on top of it and on the human brain, we will put the DDG. So we will look at it. So you know normalization. Physicists use normalization. Biologists use the word called control. Hmm? So what do you do? You do background correction. You do background correction, right? 
that if, if you take um, data from any instrument, you do background correction, uh, similar kind of blank instrument, and then you decide what is there. So what we are going to do, we create an artificial brain, which is almost identical to the human brain, and we do background correction to see where is consciousness. How about it? Good idea? OK. So um, so uh, actually, we, uh, this work started long back. Uh, we took every single brain component in the entire brain body system from neurons, proteins, microtubules, hippocampus, cerebellum, whatever be there. We didn't leave anything because we do not want to hypothesize consciousness is here, there, or there. We are experimentalists. We build the system platform for future uh, time to test. So we simulated, you can get all the data, all the structures you can download free in our da free database. I will, soon I will give you the link. And uh, then the clocks, all the clocks, the periodic oscillations that are happening from the smallest to the largest entire bo brain body system, we uh, integrate it into a model. So research papers are there. In the website, you can also download the files and structures. So theoretically, we found these rhythms. If you go to uh, uh, Grigory Busaki's book, The Brain Rhythms, he published in 2006, you will find majority of the clocks that we are reporting are reported but discrete. Nobody tried to integrate them because you have to say uh, phase relationship between different clocks. So each circle or sphere is a clock. Okay? And you can find uh, microtubule is there coming. <laughs> so different kind of symmetries and different um, vibrations actually generate a very particular kind of clock or periodic oscillations. And we can, why we are looking at clock? Because with resonators we can build it. So the top part, that nested clock architecture that you saw is the software of the brain that we want to replicate. And bottom is the brain. So brain is not mean some software in the computer. For brain for us means every single nerve fiber in the entire brain body system. So you have cerebellum, you have every single component, the connectome, and we pack it, we build it, you see the midbrain connectome and everything, and then we put in the oil or some other engineering, I will not get into those. Then we inject, because millimeter is the nerve fiber length, right? And we have to grow inside also. To, we chose 47 different kind of molecules and grew the structures. And we measure the electromagnetic resonance top right to find out that whether theoretically, theoretically um, simulated um, brain component and organically, artificially built brain component have a similar resonance frequency band. So then we choose that component, okay? And then finally we go on, we build uh, you can see top right corner, they are nearly semi-transparent. You see many, many components are there. Midbrain is uh, bottom left. So you put the molecular systems, we measure. It is going on for several years. This is the lab, we were creating them. Finally, we come, uh, we put the probe in the brain uh, instead of DDG, and we measure the how long uh, the interactions are happening at a different part of the brain. We put EEG and DDG together simultaneously. What happens is um, with a uh, space and time domain, uh, we could take a snapshot of the whole brain because now, unlike EEG, we are not integrating the values. We are taking the snapshot for how long the pulses are there and what are the intensities. And then, with every time gap, we are taking the snapshot, 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 snapshot. With, of course, you can understand, it's a massive machine and integrated cable system, not like the normal thing. So I come to the final part is, uh, we studied uh, this kind of circuit system where we have a thermal camera, we look at the face and others, we observe uh, kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz, and terahertz, we have very slow camera to look at if inter, uh, there is a communication between thermal waves between two humans and other humans. We put them, all the humans, in a circle, and those brain structures are humans. They are sitting over there, and a massive cable architecture we built in Indian Institute of Management, Rachi in Calcutta, and entire funding was done by 
DST Department of Science and, Te Science and Technology Government of India. And Stuart is also one of the um, uh, key proponent of the project. So this project ran for uh, three years. And uh, so we monitored and we found uh, key places uh, up to 50 gigahertz we, we studied. Uh, and here is the result. So um, when you look at the result, mm, uh, you see EEG-like plot. So Martin has created a software, so we see the EEG-like interactions that are happening at a different time domain. And artificial brain and human brain, when their patterns look similar, we say that they are synchronized and they are communicating. And this synchronization behavior, change of this behavior, tells us what is going on between them. So we went on, this is kind of, so we measured a whole brain body system and uh, uh, if we play music in the room, what is the effect? If we put a smell, beautiful smell in the room, how does it affect the brain? And we give food to the people, how does it affect? If they hold hands, then how does it affect? So all these kind of things we tested. So you see gigahertz pulses uh, with and without, uh, kilohertz pulses with and without, the, when they hold hand, uh, food, uh, bottom right you see smell. So I just want to tell you uh, that um, if uh, there is a music or uh, hymns or different kind of mantra we played and we try to see how uh, the brains get locked or synchronized. Synchronized means uh, what we did in the experimental setup over there with the DDG uh, everybody is wearing DDG and we see enter time domain, okay? Right now I will show you the video. Now what we do is um, each and every one is observed um, and their brains are coupled, but this kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz, terahertz, they are locked with a logical analyzer that if all the participants, one person or two person or three person, whoever is there, if they are totally synchronized, only then we will see the signal, otherwise we won't. So that is the logical behavior. So from the brain, we are measuring EEG. From the brain, we are measuring DDG. And there is, from the brain, we are also looking at the raw data signal, if there is any. Because we uh, physicists, when we create the instrument, normally you put only one instrument to do the measurement. But if you do only one instrument, it could be wrong. It could be artifact. But if you have multiple different instruments, completely different way it is looking into the same phenomenon, then there is a high possibility that you are looking at the truth. So mm, we go on measuring uh, what, is ha what happens to the music, what happens to the visual, video, auditory, different kind of work. I'm not going into details. And just to tell summary that, um, uh, that EEG, B1, B2, is the smallest time domain. And you see uh, millisecond, microsecond, then nanosecond. So, so far, so far in the last 150 years, you have been looking only into the EEG that is on the top. That is in the millisecond time domain what was happening. For the time, for, for we, after our invention with the DDG, you can look into the simultaneously in the snapshot of what is happening in 84 time domain. So a, a, a human brain uh, is there and then in a thermal. So there are 15 different kind of bands and interband what is happening in the artificial brain or the human brain. We can put only human brain also, but we always take artificial brain um, as reference just to, just to be sure that um, what are the things happening in the environment all around. And the then time comes to make a decision that like EEG, you know EEG is activated here, that means eyes are blinking and other kind of things, um, though it is very controversial. Uh, still, how do you make a decision? Suppose you, get, you buy one DDG or you get one DDG from us and you are looking at the entire time domain, then what do you do with it? So what we do is you look at, with respect to artificial brain, there are geometric invariant. You see in the B, uh, the geometric shape triangle remains unchanged in the EEG and there. And you see that particular uh, orthogonal transformation of particular geometric shape uh, get open between the two for communications. So these are the kind of things you can do. 
let's summarize. So we did two artificial brains talk to each other. Then we invite different people to come to our lab and interact with the artificial brain. How can we do that? So what Martin did is Martin sonified the vibrations that are happening. So our artificial brain is a triplet of triplet resonance chain which can vibrate exactly the same way, almost the same way, like the way human brain, uh, human body-based components do. So I am not claiming that artificial brain that we have made is conscious, but it is a reference frame to evaluate us, our expressions. And it could be the first step for mankind to start seeing what is happening out there. So uh, we, we uh, this is the singer, uh, this the uh, audacity and the sound. So both of them uh, close their eyes, the human being, and the artificial brain does not have any eyes. So initially in the 2015, 16, when I was making the brain, artificial brain, then I was to put eyes and other sensors available in the market. And I was to put and create electric signal, which is very easy to do. But later I realized that if I really want to make a conscious brain, I want to understand. And my job is not to uh, create a re robot and sell it in the market. My job is to understand how, how it is coming from. Then eyes are disruptive, nose, ears, all these sensors are disrupted. Only one sensor we keep, that is a proprioception sensor, proprioception sensor, which gives you where you are, and that is mid of the uh, spinal cord. So that sensor is there in our artificial brain. I made sure that to happen. Uh, other, other sensors, no. So electromagnetic field change and other change, that actually enables you to interact. Now, uh, you can see that artificial brain and human brain is communicating how the, we, we analyze data in different way, what is the composition. And uh, we wanted to understand the experience of the person closing the eyes, go on singing or whatever you want to do. And the artificial brain responds in, by singing back. And interaction goes on. So far, uh, so far all the people that uh, have interacted, uh, all of them, just cried, so we got only one emotion. So it is true that it is not, we are not ready. It is not fully artificial, but um, they feel like um, uh, some self of them is over there. Now how true it is, we have to confirm. We have to confirm uh, months after months, human subjects after subjects. So 24 by seven we are monitoring. Still now I am here, the data are being recorded and we are checking. So. Um, when we increase the number of uh, human being coupled, we found that we need at least eight human subjects to observe in the DDG, uh, the geometric invariant for particular emotional or cognitive state. So uh, I would just like to uh, tell one thing is invariant uh, for those who are talking, um, talking here in the conference that AI will take over, AI will become something. Um, information for us is you know, in the, if we want to understand consciousness, is not bits or qubits. It's geometric invariant. So what is geometric invariant? Um, suppose a particle is rotating around a circle, then radius is unchanged. If the triangle is rotating, the polygon remains unchanged, so that is called invariant. So if we trigger emotional state among different humans and in the DDG, in the different time domain, we find particular shape remains unchanged. That is the signature of cognitive and consciousness response for us. So we are now creating a invariant bank to understand how a geometric shape or a color or a sound or a smell could uh, be there. I will try to play. I don't know whether music will be played or not, but um, let's see. I'm not getting any sound. Okay, uh, so basically, um, can you just
get the sound? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Sound is not coming. Do I have to? I can play directly from my computer also. Yeah, I can play directly from my computer. Yeah, it's full. It's full. Oh. oh, oh. Still not. I can play. Can I play directly from my computer? Will it be? If I play directly. No, I don't see it. Is there sound on? Okay. Anyway, so <clears throat> we get back then. And unfortunately, I cannot play the hymns. Um, Excellent laptop, laptop speakers. I'm putting the sound. Uh, see if t you see, I put maximum, but still, I'm not able to get any sound. Anyway. So when there are two human subjects, uh, when there are two human subjects, you find that two regions in the DDG get active. And you can see the EEG of subject one and subject two, and thermal camera and other videos, kilohertz, megahertz, and gigahertz. Similarly, we go on increasing the number of human subjects, uh, revealing the song. We observe the eight. Unfortunately, I cannot play. Can you huh? Can you say it? Oh, no. <laughs> mm. I want to really play. Yeah, it came. I'm holding it in my hand. <laughs> okay, so this is, um, where is it? There is a uh, Ravana composed Shiva Sotram, and we played it to all the uh, all the groups. So we had eight um, eight subject groups, and uh, and we played to them, and uh, we tried to synchronize the brain. So you will see that there are eight subjects uh, S1 to S8, and when the music is played. Different, different time domain, different human subjects are selected, and they activate their brain uh, in the rhythm of the hymns. Not all the human subjects do that. 
some of the groups, they don't synchronize with the music at all. But some of the groups, they synchronize and you can see that uh, entire group start vibrating in the uh, megahertz, uh, one megahertz to 700 megahertz, you can see that the pulses are coming. So in the top, uh, Hertz domain you can see the triplet so we, uh, we we go on observing playing the music uh, those who are failed results are there in the website uploaded but in some cases we observe that the whole group is successfully able to create this uh, you can see 1 megahertz to 700 megahertz uh, all the eight persons brain at particular rhythms they come and burst together and mm -hmm. To understand whether it is right or wrong, what we did is we, we filled the room with smell. Eight people are there, filled the room with smell. Same music is played, but then you will see the pulses that are there are very sharp, one or two, and not much. So it reduces. You see the pulse? You see the isolated, discrete pulse are coming for a few nanoseconds only. So we concluded that if there is a smell, then your brain synchronization becomes very, very sharp. And you see always it is just one pulse, discrete pulse. Can you see in, the, in this spectrum? So one pulse is a few nanoseconds only. So, so far you saw the brain, brain signals in the milliseconds. And now in the nanoseconds, if you room, fill the room with the smell, we did it many, many times with many subjects. And we repeatedly, we got this particular behavior. Hmm? That, and that the pulse, and the synchronization happens, but pulse are very sharp, very, very sharp and isolated. Then we gave food to disrupt, then synchronization disappeared. So we gave sweet, and then all the people, the synchronization disappeared. And if you hold on to each other, then we saw that if we're holding the same hand, then the energy transmission passes through. You, you see the synchronization, but you are holding the other hand opposite side, I mean left to right, then uh, there is a desynchrony. There is a new kind of vibration, a new kind of uh, collective uh, information processing happens. And in the DDG, you find it's like a scheme, but if you top right corner, if you look at the gigahertz scale, then you find a very complex patterns are emerging from them. Uh, please understand that room, if, if there would not have been a global synchronization. If there would not have been a global synchronization, we could not have seen this. So with two persons are not needed, you have to increase three, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least eight persons to collectively see the invariant. Then we listed the invariant for different emotional state, what kind of geometric shapes are coming up from the DDG. And I would like to conclude Differences between EEG and DDG. EEG measures peak difference between two locations. It is not a real physical pulse in your brain. But DDG measures duration of potential burst using a stream of very short pulses. Intensity is reflected in the output pulse density. In EEG, geometric links among various time domain activation is not possible to estimate. In DDG, spontaneously delivers invariant geometric shapes for any cognitive experience, pain, love, uh, hate. In EEG, temporal precision is very low. Absolute time is not estimated. Integrated average non-real time, inhomogeneous spatial distribution due to unequal separation of electrodes. So it divides between the electrodes. So if electrodes are not separated properly, your EEG data changes. And you will see that in different labs, they adjust the electrodes to get the signal. Basically, you can't change the distance. 
Um, but absolute time in DDG, we get absolute time. It's provided using independent channels for all electrodes. So the circuit is extremely complex, machinery is complex, but each and every probe goes independently. So you get absolute time of interaction. EEG varies person to person. It seems every person has a unique pattern to express anything. If you look at our EEG, you will find a very particular person, even if he is angry, he is upset or something, a very particular pattern is common in all the transitions. But in DDG, you will find you go across humans. You will find a very particular geometric invariant is always there. So it is not human specific. You find out some features of consciousness which is not personified. And uh, EEG is a neuronal synaptic junction based phenomenon because it's in the millisecond time domain. But the DDG, subneural structures has to contribute like microtubules and other elements have to contribute. You can't uh, con take contribution from neuron. So conclusions we made regarding DDG. Neuron fires at one millisecond. Any activity faster than that seen in DDG cannot originate from neuron membrane. So microtubules and other filamentary substructures are possible reasons. Triplet of triplet resonance chain is real. It's classical, but could serve as a base for quantum information processing in room temperature and ambient atmospheric condition. I wrote this uh, conclusion because of my discussion with one person who said, what happens if triplet or triplet resonance band? So I would like to share this experience. If you open any nature or science journal, top class publications, to uh, see where the, how the quantum entanglement is measured, you will see atomic clusters at two different distance, centimeters apart in room temperature. If you can electromagnetically, resonantly couple them, then you can do quantum energy transfer between the two. I repeat, room temperature, ambient atmosphere, but atomic clusters are separated. But if you can resonantly couple them, electromagnetically resonantly couple them, you can transfer quantum mechanical information and entangle them. So when in the human brain body system, in the internet network, triplet of triplet resonance band is connecting from the smallest to the largest, you have a chain, you have a platform to transfer quantum information in room temperature, ambient atmosphere. Correlates of human consciousness is not visualized in one human data. At least eight humans are necessary to clearly notice the invariance of human cognition. So maybe consciousness we cannot study by measuring one human. We need at least eight or in a group to see the data. So this is the group who, are, um, who worked in uh, doing the human subject experiments. And there are another group who worked for organic jelly-based brain construction. There is another group who worked for electronics and other devices. So totally, I could say there are 40 to 50 people who worked in this particular project to what I presented to you. And thank you for your patience.